scripture reading today is found in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will direct your paths. Let's bow our heads. Dear God, please help us to trust in you. Please help us to take away something that we can learn. And please help us to understand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, Church, and happy Sabbath. Thank you for joining us in this April 10 Sabbath School program of the Loma Linda Filipino Church. I welcome our regular members, our church leaders, our frequent visitors, and our first-time guests. Thank you for joining us in this virtual worship service of the Loma Linda Filipino Church. As the statistics concerning the pandemic continues to improve, it is our earnest hope and prayer that this Saturday brings us one week closer to the reopening of our local church for congregational worship. So we ask that you join us in prayer to make this a reality for our church. But we also ask that you join us in action so that we can truly make this church reopening happen. Uh, we need people that will be joining the action groups and the task forces who will ensure that we follow the necessary measures for sanitation and safety. Safety not only for ourselves, but also for those who will come to worship with us. So I invite you to please reach out to our church leaders and our church pastors for volunteer opportunities. In our life experiences, in our day-to-day -day living, it is always a pleasure and a joy to hear positive and happy stories. We're always happy and thrilled to hear stories about success, about achievements, uh, job promotion, maybe celebrations in a family like birthdays, weddings, the birth of a baby, the acquisition of a new home, um, all these positive things give us a lift or a boost in our spirit. However, in our day-to-day -day living, we all know for a fact that life has its ups and downs. Even the book of Ecclesiastes point to us that there is a time for everything. Chapter 4 verse 3 reminds us that there is a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. In our special feature in our Sabbath School program this morning, we will be hearing from a young mother who experienced with her family the ups in life and a sudden down in life. Something that is really sad and overwhelming happened to their family in November year 2020. And I am pleased that she is here to share her story to us, not only of her journey in life, but her journey in faith. I am grateful that um, she is here to share with us her story, and I hope that we will all be able to draw some inspiration from her testimony, and that it will give us a little bit more oil in our lamps as we face our day-to-day -day challenges. Our featured speaker for today who will share a personal testimony is Myla Haliasgo Abuel, shown in this picture. To her left is her daughter Kirsty Aliana, 17, and to her right is her 13-year-old son, Kurt Angelo. Myla is a nurse at the Royal Victoria Infirmary. The Abwells are active members of the Newcastle SDA Church in UK. Myla and her husband Joel were nursing batch mates who graduated from the Adventist University of the Philippines in 1992. To capture their life's mission and passion, they came up with an acronym for their last name, Abuel. A. Active in God's work. B. Belief in God's soon return, U, unity with strength and grace from above, E, everything we do with trust in God, L, loving and serving God is our aim. May we all be blessed by Myla's story of faith and courage rooted in a strong trust in God.
Please allow me to thank our participants for our Sabbath School program for today. Thank you to the Tamaris couple, Ted and Mina, for leading us in our inspiration. Thank you to siblings, Lauren and Noah Aguilar, for the Bible reading and the opening prayer. And again, a special appreciation to our out-of-country participants, the Abuel family from UK. For our lesson discussion for today, members of the music department led by Dr. Epi Manalo will lead us in our Sabbath school lesson study. To all our participants, thank you for your time and your talents. To all of you joining us in this virtual worship service, welcome and happy Sabbath. Good morning everyone. Greetings from Newcastle, United Kingdom. This morning, I'll be sharing to you my message about how can I give thanks to God in lonely hurting circumstances? This is my questions in my life. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 how can I give thanks in lonely, hurting circumstances? I was a sudden, young, beautiful widow. Grief was growing. My children, Kirsty and Kurt, were hurting. And I was facing a future without a husband. And I couldn't begin to imagine. Life stung. My heart was shattered. Every task seems hard. And I was overwhelmed. Maybe like me, you question that biblical mandate to give thanks at all times. Do we thank God for a sudden death? Or COVID-19? And all the calamities, distractions? As I studied this verse, I saw it doesn't say where to give thanks for everything, but where to give thanks in everything. Give thanks opens our eyes to all the good God is doing right in the midst of the hardship. God is good and God does good. And that doesn't change even when circumstances are bad. For the last 51 years, I've clung to his name for God. Faithful and true. I mean, I've always known that God is trustworthy. But I really didn't get it until last November 21, 2020. When our family was about to lead the song of praise for the second service via Zoom. Then my husband, Joel, Kirsty and Kurt was at the back on me while I was in front of the piano. We are ready to start the live Zoom. And suddenly, Joel complained severe headache. So I let him sit down on the sofa and I called 999. Joel still can talk that time and he said to the operator, my head is aching on the right side and also my hand is numb and my legs is numb on the right side. Then... I asked Kirsty to call my brother, who's a GP here, and Kirsty called up Maynard. Then the ambulance arrived. Then Joel was already collapsed that time. That time I give it up to God. In deep grief, God's work brings deep comfort. The Bible is living and active and meets the most broken and pain-filled places in our soul. 
Within the scripture, there is a bomb for every wound and salve for every sore. That's Charles Spurgeon said. Early in my grief, I was desperate for comfort. Only God could bring. Some Bible verses anchored me when my world turned upside down. Some verses reminded me of God's truth when lies threatened to pull me under. And some Bible verses brought hope that despite the cavernous loss and sadness, life would feel good again. Sharing to you the verses that I was been claiming. First, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. That's Psalms 147 verse 3. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. That's Psalms 34 verse 18. Three, you have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy that I might sing praises to you, not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks forever. That's Psalms 3 verse 11 to 12. This is my comfort in my affliction that your promise gives me life. That's Psalms 119 verse 50. Number five, you keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your battle. You have recorded each one in your book. That's Psalms 56, 8. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. That's 2 Kings 20, verse 5. And last, God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is good. God is trustworthy. God loves with an everlasting love. God is on the throne. I was praying, asking God to heal Joel, only spoken praise and the powerful presence of God. When God gives thanks, we should be thanking God through prayer. One way to give thanks in all things is through prayer. When we pray, we talk with God, we turn our hearts and minds toward Him, and keep our attitudes in state of gratitude, of relationship, which helps us become more thankful. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. That's in Colossians 4 verse 2. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. That's Philippians 4 verse 6. Talking to God helps us everything. We can give thanks through perspective. Another way in by embracing the things of heaven rather than the things on earth. Material items come and go. Building crumble and bones turn to dust. But God and God's kingdom are forever. Keeping and focus ourselves. Do not be store up for ourselves treasures on earth where months and vermin destroy and where thieves break and unsteal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where months and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break and steal. For where trans treasure is, there your heart will be also. That's Matthew 6, verse 19 to 20. We can
can give thanks by striving for the right initial mindset. A third way is to adopt an attitude of gratitude from the start. Psalms 10, 100 is known as the grateful Psalms. It tells us, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and he, we are his. We are his people, the sheep and his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. With thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Forever his faithful continues through our generation. Giving God thanks in bad circumstances doesn't always change the circumstances. But it's always a change us in a circumstance. There is always something in which to give thanks. Even on the darkest day, there are blessings to count. We must remember that if we face the sun, the shadow will fall behind us. But if we fa if we turning back on the sun, all the shadow will be in front. William Barclay. It's not that we are asked to be thankful for a death, disease, or calamity, but rather that when we are experiencing a difficult circumstances, it is important to have a grateful and positive heart that thanks God for life or other blessings in spite of our present situations. That is, despite our troubles, disappointments, failures, or hurts, we should be thankful for the good things in life. We are supposed to be grateful for all things, even when life is not going as well would like. We don't need to be happy, nor does life need to be perfect for us to be thankful. Gratitude helps us keep a thankful, positive attitude about life and the blessings we receive. It helps remind us we don't deserve anything and only because God's great love and mercies are we even granted life. We can give thanks even from the difficulties. When we are do all this, we find that we might even be able to stretch our hearts to something we never imagined we could do, be thankful even from the hard times and the difficulties. Romans 28 to verse 28 tells us, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. This means that even bad things can be used to serve a good purpose. An infirmity Infirmity can help draw us closer to God. Indeed, the death of Joel was a thorn in flesh that I begged God to remove, but God chose not to. He realized this thorn ultimately helped glorifying God, for God's power is made perfect in weakness. That's 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. The death of someone close to us can help us learn to lean on God better and draw closer to Him. Remember, but through prayer, perspective, a positive mindset, and an open and willing heart, we can learn to cultivate more gratitude. I hope and pray that you learn this in life that everything that we do 
we will just give thanks to God in our lonely, hurting circumstances. Happy Sabbath to all. God bless us all. i